What's up guys, this is Zach from oncewasfat.com uh, and I'm here for my new Ask Zach segment. I uh, put a little thing out on the blog today and on social media uh, telling people to submit questions to me um, because I get questions all the time and uh, I just wanted to get some specific questions to answer to get you guys involved uh, and to kind of generate some content that way. Um, so I'm going to be answering some different questions uh, on, on some different videos. Uh, so let's go ahead and tackle the first one. Um, this question comes from Angie Florence uh, via Instagram, and Angie asked me, what is the best daily percentage of macros for weight loss? Uh, great question, so let me first give you a little bit of background. If you don't know what she's talking about, she's talking about macros. She's talking about macronutrient intake. So your macronutrients are broken down to three things, fat, protein, and carbohydrates. So basically she's asking like, what percentage of each should her meals be based out of in order to lose weight? Uh, because a lot of people will keep track of this, uh, like how many grams of protein they have a day, how many grams of fat, carbs, um, in order to lose weight or just hit any general fitness goals. Uh, a lot of magazines and stuff that you read will advocate this um, and, and so forth. So uh, what is the best daily percent of macros for weight loss? And here's my answer. I don't know. <laughs> uh, and let me kind of explain this. I'm going to I'm going to answer your question, but then I'm going to kind of take this a different way. Um, to answer your question, uh, it varies from person to person. Um, you, it really depends on the main factors are your gender and your weight. Uh, your height can be involved in this. Um, your activity level uh, is your job sedentary or are you a construction worker so you move around a lot. Uh, how often do you work out? Like all these things go into account. Um, so you can find a BMR calculator, which is your base metabolic rate. Uh, you can find those calculators online. Generally, they're used for figuring out your calorie intake, what that should be. But a lot of them as well will like give you a uh, basis of mac macros to use. Um, MyFitnessPal is a great app for that. Uh, they give you a pretty general uh, basis to use as well as uh, obviously it's a great food journal app and for counting calories. Um, but let me answer your question this way. Um, I personally do not uh, myself or teach to people uh, macro counting or calorie counting for that instance. Um, and let me kind of tell a few reasons why. Um, I did this for a while. When I was losing weight, I, I was very religious about counting calories for a good long while. Um, and I went through a phase where I counted macronutrients. And while I did lose weight um, and, and stuff while I was doing that, let me just be honest, I was miserable. Um, it's, it, was, it be, had become such a habit ingrained in me to where it was like, you know, if I didn't do it, like I was stressing about what I was going to eat. It was like, man, you know, like I only got 100 calories left or I got to hit, you know, I, I got 100 calories left, but I, I haven't hit my protein mark for the day or I haven't hit my fat, you know, uh, you know, I gotta take this away here, and it's just, it becomes way too stressful. Um, so it took me a long time to stop. Um, I met Terry at Life Fitness Academy, um, and he had like slowly stopped, talked me into doing, to stopping. Um, and since then, I've been so much happier. Uh, I've maintained my weight, I feel great, I'm healthy, I don't get sick, all that good stuff. Um, so that's the one big thing, and you know, this is kind of gonna be talking about calorie counting too, because I kind of put these things in the same in the same category, um, because you know not only was I miserable, but I was ignoring really healthy foods that were high calories. So the one I always use that's the best example is I wouldn't eat avocados. Like I, when I count calories, I was like, man, you know, I have you know six eighteen hundred calories I can eat today. Like how am I gonna fit in a two hundred and fifty calorie avocado and it's just, I'm not even gonna bother with it. You know, I wouldn't even have half a one. And it was all because of the calories. Um, so I think that, uh, you know, just to me doing this is it takes the focus off you, you know, getting really paying attention to what really matters on the food label, which is the ingredients. In my opinion, and this is just me, a lot of people are not gonna agree with me, the ingredients are the first thing you should look at, and the calories and the macronutrients are one of the last things. Um, and that's just my opinion. I'm not saying that stuff doesn't matter at all. Um, 
but it's just my opinion. I think the content of our food has so much more to do with our, uh, with our overall health. Um, unless you have, you know, if you have certain things going on, you have deficiencies, then obviously you got to pay attention to those things. Um, but I think we spend way too much time, um, and by we, I mean in the fitness industry, um, you know, focusing on this, because it's not a sustainable lifestyle. Like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to count calories or count protein intake the rest of my life, so why would I do it now? Like, why wouldn't I just go ahead and start learning how to live now, you know, so I can just stay that way? Because I'm not going to, like, who wants to do that forever? And I know a lot of people are going to say, well, you just count your macros until you hit your fitness goals. Well, okay, well then what? You know, then how you like how are you going to maintain it? And it's really hard to come off that to come off that habit once you've been doing it. It's really hard for me. Um, so, uh, you know, and, and honestly, like the healthiest people that I know, and I know a lot of healthy people because I'm around a lot of people at my gym, my chiropractor, my farmer. None of these people do this. They don't count calories. They don't count their macros. Um, but you know the all the fit, the fitness magazine stuff you're gonna read are gonna tell you to do it, and there is science behind it. You know, as far as meeting your fitness goals. Um, but you know, my goals are more generated on just being like the healthiest version of me. Um, and uh, you know, those magazines are gonna tell you to do that. They're gonna tell you to have one gram of protein per pound of body weight you have. Because if you look at every other page, it's an advertisement for a protein powder. So of course they want you to have a lot of protein. When in all reality, we all eat way too much protein as it is. So, I mean, like, why are we supplementing that? But that's a whole other video I can go into on supplements. Um, so here are some things that I replaced macro counting and calorie counting with that I focus on personally on a daily basis. These are things that I try to do every day that will help me hit my goals, um, you know, and, and, and be healthy. Um, so the first thing is every single day I try to eat one meal that's all raw. Um, so it's a way for me to get in a whole bunch of raw fruits and mainly vegetables in one sitting. Um, I would usually almost always, I do this with a smoothie uh, or a juice. Uh, but almost always with a smoothie, because with a smoothie I can get raw milk in there, um, which I'm a big advocate of. Um, I can get all my, you know, I can get spinach, kale, I can put spirulina in there, maca root powder, um, you know, berries, mangoes, uh, I put coconut water in there. I mean, I can just get a lot of different nutrients into a smoothie and it's delicious. Um, so that's the first thing is I try to eat one raw meal a day. I usually do a smoothie for breakfast. Um, I try to have a fermented food at every meal. Um, so I try to, fermented food is like a aged living food that has, is full of like beneficial bacteria and probiotics. Um, so I get a lot of this through my farmer. I'm fortunate in that way. Um, I will, uh, he, I will drink his kefir water before a meal. I'll drink the milk. I'll have the, the milk as a ferment. Um, he, I'll put some of his fermented barbecue sauce on my chicken. Um, I'll have some of his fermented granola. I, tonight for dinner, I made like a little burrito bowl and I used, he makes fermented guacamole. So I use that in the burrito bowl. I try to do something every meal. Um, if you don't have an awesome farmer like I do that has fermented foods, um, I mean, you can do it through like, you know, really healthy, like organic or raw cheeses. Um, or, you know, kombucha, like you can get kombucha almost anywhere. Now it's becoming very popular and that's a fermented tea. So you can drink a kombucha with, with your meals. Um, I drink a glass of water when I wake up and before every meal. Um, that's addition to the water I drink throughout the day. Just try to stay hydrated. Um, I make sure veggies take up the majority of our plate because honestly, if there's anything we need to supplement in this country, everyone needs more greens and more colors on their plate. Um, so I try to make sure that the vegetable, like the side dishes are a much bigger part of my plate than like my protein, which is usually like chicken or, you know, whatever. Um, I try to make that a smaller portion. Um, you know, and I get protein throughout the days, other way, other ways through my milk, uh, through eggs, you know, like eating hard boiled eggs and stuff. Um, I generally, I don't eat after seven o'clock. Um, that gives my body some more time to digest and to fast between dinner and breakfast. 
And uh, I try not to eat like complex carbs, mainly bread, because um, I do eat bread. I eat sprouted bread, Ezekiel brand. I try to not eat that after generally about two or three o'clock in the afternoon, just because it takes longer to digest. And if I do it in the morning, like or earlier in the day, I can give it more time to digest. Um, so those are things that I focus on. Um, I hope this answers your question. Um, I just don't. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna teach you to count macros, or I'm not. And I'm not going to encourage that because I wouldn't tell. I wouldn't do it myself, and I wouldn't teach my clients. And I've gotten plenty of weight off clients at the gym without them ever counting one calorie or counting macros. Um, I mean, I've gotten 50 pounds off two different people and we never count calories. All we did was food journals and, you know, we used our food guide at Life Fitness Academy and just filled in deficiencies in their diet and made them exercise and they lost weight and they're super healthy. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Um, one more little note on calorie counting I, and macro count, I will say, one thing it did do for me that I will say is good to do it first is it did teach me when I was 320 pounds about uh, smaller portion sizes. It did help me with that kind of thing and make some smarter choices, but it's just not a sustainable lifestyle. And I've learned that you can lose weight and be healthy without it. So I uh, hope this answers your question, Angie. And uh, thanks. See you guys later with the next question. Peace.